welcome to my youtube channel if you are new to my page please subscribe and at the end of the video if you find my content interesting and new please like it and also comment below even if you don't like my content you can click on the other button and also comment below the Otokoto saga is one long and complicated story with different influential and affluential people in it. In this story, we have Innocent Eke Anyawo, Anthony Ikechuku Okoronkwa, and the Otokoto Hotel. This event took place in Oweri, the capital city of Imo State, on September 19, 1996, during the brutal regime of General Sonny Abasha, the late General Sonny Abacha. Anthony Ikechuku Okoronkwa was a 11 year old boy who hugged Boyd Gradnot in the city of Oweri. Now, he had been hawking since he was much younger, so he had a routine which he followed every day. Thus, he was very, very popular in those areas where he sold his goods. And on this particular day, as usual, he was strolling along. Ama Kohia area of Oweri. Ama Kohia. I hope I got that right. So he was strolling along this area when a customer called him into a very famous hotel called Otokoto. And that was the last time he was seen alive. He completely disappeared. The hotel Otokoto was owned by one chief Vicent Duru, a very influential man in Oweri. Chief Duru was nicknamed Otokoto. Yep, he was nicknamed after his hotel or his hotel was named after him. I have no idea. Now, who was this customer? He was Innocent Eke Anyawu, a 32-year-old gardener at the Otokoto Hotel where Anthony was called in. You might be wondering, how is Innocent central to the disappearance of Anthony? Well, I will tell you a very sad but gruesome story. Innocent called Anthony into the hotel with the guys that he was interested in buying some boiled grad nuts. Now, when Anthony entered into the hotel, he was offered a seat and given a bottle of chilled Coca-Cola. Now, this event already getting suspicious, but he was a very little boy. He had no idea. And considering his condition and the fact that this young boy had been hawking under the sun for hours, he accepted the Coca-Cola and drank with appreciation. I mean, who wouldn't? This was in 1996, and I am sure Coca-Cola was a luxury then. Being able to drink Coca-Cola must have been like a dream come true for, for him. Unknowing to Anthony, Innocent had spied the drink with a kind of sleeping drug. After realizing that Anthony had slept off, Innocent carried the limp body of Anthony and took him into one of the hotel rooms where he went ahead to behead him. After Innocent had cut off the head of Anthony, he disemboweled his chest, removed his liver and other parts of his body that he felt he needed. He also removed Anthony's genitals. After successfully butchering Anthony, Innocent sorted out the organs he removed from Anthony and put Anthony's head into a polythene bag. He then proceeded to his next destination, to the house of the man who needed the head, the man who was behind it all. On his way going, Innocent stopped a motorist. In Nigeria, we call them Okada riders. So he told this Okada rider to convey him to his destination. Now on the way going, the Okada rider named Okpara suddenly realized that his passenger, which was Innocent, was carrying a human head. And how did he realize this? He saw blood dripping out of the polythene bag and probably observed the shape of the bag. Looking at the carelessness of innocence, 
like the way he conveyed this bag and his ex exhibit now it makes me wonder how many times he must have done this in the past successfully because it took no extra care now how many people i must have walked past that had heads hidden in the bag without me knowing fortunately okpara did not make any kind of alarm that he had seen the head which was very wise of him he obediently took innocent to his destination which upon arrival okpara noticed it to be the residence of a highly influential figure named chief leonard unaogu chief leonard unaogu was the younger brother of dr Lars unaogu a serving minister in the general sunny abacha federal executive council after dropping off innocent okpara proceeded to alerting the police about his finding very smart okpara is very smart kudos to this man wherever he is thank you thank you so much now on his way back from chief leonard unahogu's house innocent was intercepted by the police with the head of anthony still with him as he did not see the chief at home luckily the chief had gone to lagos two days before so he had to bring the head back to oweri with him he was arrested by the police and the head was recovered from him very sad the boy just wasted like that now the news about the death of anthony brought about a widespread of protest in oweri people became very vexed they became extremely vexed when the media broadcast the image of innocent with the head of anthony they totally lost it they trooped out in their thousands to destroy every property attached to the okotoko and duru's name the otokoto hotel was destroyed totally like totally to the ground and it was a very huge hotel it was destroyed to the to the brim even the families and friends of chief vicent duru were not spared they had to go into hiding in order not to be killed by the angry protesters rich men in oweri traditional rulers and even government officials were not spared they invaded the homes of suspected dealers in human body parts sniffing around for hard evidence which they reportedly found in one of the houses in fact every human being with excess money or influence were looked with suspicion and were targeted by rioters in oweri at this particular time churches were not spared too especially the overcomers christian mission across wetera where it was rumored that human skulls were discovered with charms and amulets but the police later said that what was found were just various animal skulls pots full of vulture and other feathers shock red candles books on mystic subjects photographs cowries objects shaped like human beings and bottles that contain unspecified powders and herbal preparations in the church the riot went on from 24th of september 1996 to 25th of september 1996 the mob agreed to calm down only after the military administrator assured them that a full state level investigation of the incident was going to be launched after his arrest innocent was remanded in prison where he died on the fourth day from food poisoning ah nigeria ah ah on the fourth day he died he was in the prison though he died from food poisoning fortunately he had confessed to his interrogators that leonard una ogu was the brain behind the racial killing syndicate so it seemed that this otokoto was actually a group a syndicate group a ritual killing court that that had numerous members he confessed that the ritual killing ring was a well-organized machine that specialized in the harvesting of human body parts 
and also selling them to those interested in using them for rituals and all of the usual nonsense they claim to be using them for. He also claimed that Leonard Unahogu was the one who ordered to get a human head. Reports also have it that the Otokoto court had been in place for as far back as 1976. So that is a whopping 20 years before these people were caught. Can you imagine how many humans these people must have killed? I can't even imagine. Ah. Anyways, he also said that no one was spared in the Otokoto Hotel. Innocent guests and unsuspecting travelers who lodged at the hotel were drugged or attacked in the middle of the night and hacked to their deaths, after which they were cut into pieces for sale. Before the Otokoto Hotel was burnt down, the police went there and they discovered the shallow grave where Innocent had buried the headless body of Antonio. They also discovered shallow grave site where other victims had been buried. No one knows exactly the total number of victims. Sorry. No one knows exactly the total numbers of victims that were killed by this group, but the total number of exhumed bodies recovered from the hotel were 24. Chief Una Ogu, Chief Vicente Duro, and the staff of Otokoto Hotel were later arrested by the police and in 2013, the seven accused persons were convicted of murder. They were Chief Vicente Duro, a.k.a. Otokoto, Alba A.J. Ebu, Samson Inamito, Ebenezer, Ekwe Eku, <laughs> sorry, Ebenezer, Eku Ekwe, Lawrence Ebu, Rufus Ayanwu and Chief Leonard Unaogo, they were to be hanged to death. The presiding judge, Justice Umosu Ieme, while delivering a judgment, referred to Chief Visenduru as a hardened and all-repentant murderer, and Chief Unahogu as a highly sophisticated criminal. Thirteen years after he was convicted, Chief Visenduru was hanged to death in Portacot on Sunday, November 13, 2016. While Chief Leonard Unaogu died in a very mysterious circumstances in the Potter Court Federal Prison. So this is the end of the story of Otokoto. Thank you for tuning in today. Have a wonderful, glorious day. Bye.